Today I'm going to be showing you five acorn themed DIY projects and the best part about it is you can find almost all the supplies to make these at Dollar Tree and they're under five dollars each so let's quit gabbing let's get to crafting and we'll start now. On this channel I love to share DIYs and budget home decor if we haven't met yet my name is Lisa and this is Our Gray House. Jumping right into DIY number one I am taking this wooden egg shape that I got from Dollar Tree and I will just say the edges of this egg shape, I got it around Easter time, you know, um, edges of this egg shape are so ridiculously rough. I even, I tried sanding it multiple different ways and it just, I could not get it to look smooth and finished. So anyway, it is what it is, but I'm painting, painting it with folk art, um, chalk paint in the color Parisian gray. And I have this little half circle shape that I got from another project that I did a while back. And I'm painting with Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. And you're not even gonna see this part, but anyway, I just, I wanted it to all be finished looking. So then I was looking at the egg and I realized I hadn't painted the back. And I thought, well, I'm gonna put that little half circle on the front. I decided to put it in the back, so therefore, I had to paint the back with the same folk art Parisian gray. And then I decided to take some Waverly um, wax in the color antique and kind of darken up the, what's gonna be the top of the acorn, the acorn cap. I'm deciding to darken it up and I'm just, like I said, painting on this Waverly wax in the color antique and then I'm wiping it off with a damp scrap piece of cloth. And then I am just taking some hot glue and making a line around where the cap is going to go. And then I attach the cap to the top. And then I put a dab of hot glue at the very top and I'm attaching a little piece of a branch that I just sawed off to be the little stem. <laughs> I think it turned out pretty cute. This is how it turned out. I did add some distressing ink in the color brown to kind of give that cap some definition. And you know, I'm looking at it now and I think it kind of needs a little bit more oomph, but I really, you all know, I really love neutrals. And so I think it's gonna look cute on my tear tray. Y'all, today's video is part of the Fall Frenzy Home Decor $5 under $5 DIY challenge open playlist that's hosted by my friend Missy from Crafty Cove DIY. Emily from Farm Charm Chic, and the guest host this month is Robin from Robin's Buys and DIYs. You can check out their channels as well as a link to the playlist in the description box below. For DIY number two, I had this acorn wood shape cut out that I got from Dollar Tree last year, and I couldn't decide if I wanted to put it in, into a canvas wood frame. Um, I kind of like the look of it, you know, but then I decided to put it on a wood square that I got from Dollar Tree and I'm taking some, um, spackle that you can also get from Dollar Tree and I'm filling in the hole at the top because it's kind of like an ornament, you know, it's got a little hole on top and when you're doing the spackle, you just kind of need to sh make sure that the spackle just doesn't push all the way through. And so I put a little bit extra, so it's kind of got a little bit of a hump and then when it's dry, I sand it down smooth. I told you I've been loving those green colors. So I'm taking Waverly chalk paint in the color um, moss. <laughs> and I'm gonna give a coat of paint to the front and back of this wood square piece. I did paint that acorn shape with Waverly um, chalk paint in the color plaster and I'm just hot gluing it to the front of this little square piece. Now, I am gonna hot glue on a little bit of twine. See me doing it here? And I take that little spatula thing, it's a silicone makeup brush actually that I got from Dollar Tree and I use that so I don't burn myself. And then I'm gonna wrap that twine around several times, I don't know, four or five, just till you like how it looks. Once you've wrapped it around as many times as you like, just take a little dab of hot glue and carefully lay that twine down and that will secure it in the back. Again, I'm using that little silicone brush thing because I'm trying not to burn myself. 
So this is how it turned out. As you can see, I did add a little bow to the corner and I took that some more of that brown distressing ink and I went around the edges of the acorn and kind of highlighted or shaded in the cap of the acorn just a little bit more just to give it some definition. Um, I still think it's super neutral and I'm just really loving the screen color for fall. It's just giving me all the fall vibes. Gosh, y'all, we're already on DIY number three. I can hardly believe it. We're just chugging right along. So I had these two egg shapes. The one on the left um, came in a set and decided not to use that. I decided to go with the wooden egg that I, similar to the one that I had used, what's well, exactly like the one I'd used earlier, but it's another one. And I cut off another little piece of branch to act as the acorn stem. And I'm just gonna hot glue that in place And because that area is not really even and flat, you kind of got to, you know, put a little extra glue and just kind of wait a minute. I have not used nautical rope in a DIY in forever. So I'm adding some hot glue here and I am just going to start, I'm putting the nautical rope right by the stem because I'm going to wrap it around for the cap. And see, I almost burnt myself y'all. <laughs> I want to show you something as I add hot glue here and I thought I had let it set long enough I pulled that around and the back popped off I'm like oh my gosh so <laughs> I'm holding this part firmly in place so it stays and then I'll start fixing the part that kind of came loose I added a little bit more hot glue and kind of trimmed it at an angle a little bit so that I could hopefully lay it down a little bit better. Y'all, I'm trying not to burn myself, but um, gotta make this work. I gotta make this DIY work. At this point, you're basically hot gluing down, just do a bead of hot glue, and then pull that rope across, and then hold it down firmly until, I don't know, like 10 seconds or whatever, until you feel like it's really staying in place. And then you're gonna carefully flip it over put some another bead of glue and wrap it around the back. See, I'm just carefully to bring it around, adding some more glue and then pressing that nautical rope down again and just holding it. As you can see, I did that until I just felt like it was large enough to look like an acorn cap. And then I decided to stain that wood with Waverly Wax in the color Antique. I probably could have stained it before I added the, the nautical rope, but you know, either way works. And as you can see, I must have a helper in the corner there. <laughs> but I just paint it on like I normally do, and then I wipe it off with that scrap piece of cloth. And if you don't want to use cloth, you can use like a baby wipe or something. Just whatever. You just need to wipe off the excess so it's just not like hanging on there. Y'all, I really like how this turned out. I think it looks, I mean, well, obviously it's super neutral, but it's just the textures of it. And I, I just really love it. I, I love how this turned out. I did not put any Jenka blocks or anything to help it stand up because I haven't decided how I want to style it, but this is how it turned out and it's super cute. Hey y'all, I just wanted to pop in here and share a couple of things really quick. Number one, if you haven't already liked this video and subscribed to my channel, I would appreciate it if you did because it helps YouTube to notice me just a little bit more. And the second thing is, I have a crafting group on Facebook with my friend Sarah from Jujube DIY and it's called Crafty DIYs on a Budget. The link is going to be below. I'd love it if you join us and share whatever projects you're working on now. Okay, let's get back to the DIYs. For DIY number four and DIY number five, I'm gonna be painting some beads in four different colors. I'm using the Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Plaster, Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Moss. I'm using, I think it's Folk Art Terracotta, and then some more Parisian Gray. So I'm just making several sets of the different colors. I took some bamboo skewers from Dollar Tree. Captain's back to hell. Anyway, I took these bamboo skewers and I'm using my favorite Waverly Wax in the color Antique and I'm just painting them on, 
uh, painting it on to stain it and then I'll of course wipe it off with a scrap piece of cloth. Now bamboo skewers or at least these do not seem to take stain very well at all. It seems to almost all wipe off. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Maybe I should have sanded it before I did it. Who knows? But just, just to let you know, it's not really going to take stain and make it that dark. So I'm assuming if I wanted it darker, I probably would, you know, could have or should have painted it. Trying to decide if I'm going to use the white coffee mug or that kind of amber colored, greenish colored little pitcher thing super cute but I end up going with the coffee cup anyways so I'm cutting down the bamboo skewers and I'm trying to cut them at varying lengths I don't want them to all be the same size or anything like that I'm gonna add a little dab of hot glue at the top of that skewer or on one end of the skewer and then I'm placing that little bead on there just to where the skewer touches like not all the way through but like at the very just leaving it at the very tip but making sure the skewer is all inside of the bead and i do that for all the beads all the skewers that i have i add some hot glue to the top of the little bead and i grab one of those acorn caps that i have in my stash and I'm going to attach it to the top. All right, y'all, this is how it turned out. So, okay. My idea was that this was going to be like a vase filler and just kind of add pops of color to a tear tray. And instead it kind of looks like little people's heads with like a Dr. Seuss, you know, cap that sticks up or something. I don't know. My vision, I don't want, it feels like I need to just put little smiley faces on each one of those beads. Tell me what you think in the comments. Tell you, tell me what you think I could do to kind of remedy this. My daughter, Sarah, who was just visiting said, you know, put something else in the vase so it kind of like balances it out. I have no idea what to put. So if you have any ideas, leave me a comment. Y'all, here we are at DIY number five and I'm taking the end of a paint stick and um, I just realized I haven't told y'all how much things have been costing me. Anyways, taking the end of a paint stick and I'm just kind of marking off. I want it to look like a little tag. And, you know, of course I've used paint stir sticks in other projects. So I wanted to, you know, use the scraps that, that are left over. So I've cut it down to what I want. I've drilled a hole in it and I'm painting it with um, Waverly chalk paint in the color Moss. Or no, celery, celery. Y'all, I think I said moss on the other project and that's not correct. Anyway, now I'm taking a rubber stamp. I got this from Target and I was just, you know, putting it on the stamp pad and I'm putting it in the center of the little tag, pressing down firmly and there you go. Y'all, this is how I store my acorn caps in a vintage Tupperware sandwich container. I'm taking the caps and I'm just kind of trying to see if they fit the top of the beads without being too large and covering up on the, the hole on each side because I'm going to be stringing them together. I'm adding some glue to the inside of the cap again and this time I'm really trying to make sure that I do not cover up the holes in the beads because again, like I said, I'm stringing these together to make a garland. And a lot of times, depending on what type of string or twine I'm using, sometimes you can just thread it through easily. Other times you have to take some like painter's tape or masking tape and kind of put it on the edge and make it to a point so that it threads through a little bit easier. These, unfortunately, I couldn't use the tapestry needle because the tapestry needle and the twine would have been too big. It wouldn't have passed through the hole. But um, as you see there, <laughs> trying to get it through the hole but it's not really working that well as you can see I've got them all strung on and I just love how those colors are working together and so now it's time to make a tassel I did leave enough string so that I could tie the tassel to the garland but then when I'm done when I'm done attaching it like that I kind of thread the a little bit of the extra twine back into the beads. It's kind of hard to explain. I really probably should make like a separate video on how I do that. 
so it makes sense. But anyway, I attach the, what's gonna be the tassel to the garland. And I take an extra piece of twine and I wrap it around the top there. That's what makes the tassel head. And then you just have to trim the bottom. You can cut apart the little circles there like you see me doing here, and then just give it a trim to even all of the pieces of twine so they're all even. And this is how it turned out, y'all. This, I, I love it. I think it's super cute. It doesn't look like little people's heads <laughs> or anything like that. And very simple and easy to make, and it'll look great on a tiered tray. I usually like to talk through how much each piece cost me to make. They were well under $5 each. And you know, I have a lot of the supplies on hand, like the twine in this one. Um, oh, this one here, the nautical rope I've had for ages. And that egg piece came from last year. I love how it turned out though. I just love like the different textures and just like the different look to it. I, I really think that turned out well. This one is super cute too, but yeah. It's super cute, but I like the other one better. <laughs> These just look like people's heads to me, y'all. So it's just hard to be I'm like, I don't know, how, I don't know how to fix that. This one here, again, a little on the plainer side, but I do like that it's super neutral and it'll look cute on a tear tray as like a filler piece. This is my favorite, y'all. I just, I love it. I, I think it turned out so great. Thank y'all so much for watching today. I really enjoyed sharing my projects with y'all and I hope you enjoyed them too. Tell me in the comments below which one is your favorite. And don't forget, if you wanna follow me here on YouTube or over on Instagram or really anywhere else, it's Our Gray House, but just don't follow me in real life though because that's creepy. Bye.